Okay, I'm going to talk about the different types of motor blocks and how they're different and what they do for you um, so that you can decide which one's going to be best for the application you're doing. All right, we have first up the blue advanced unregulated motor block. Second, we have the regulated normal block. We have the tank block and we have the move steering block. I'm actually going to talk about the advanced unregulated block first because it's the most simplest block to understand because it does very little, it's unregulated. Basically, you just give it a power level and it just sends that power level to the motor and the motor does whatever speed it happens to do. And what you'll find is if it has resistance, it will turn slower. If it's going up a hill, it will turn slower. If it's going down a hill, it will go faster. The unregulated block doesn't check what speed you're doing. It just simply puts out the power and you end up with what speed, whatever speed. And that's referred to as open loop. Basically the computer just tells the motor to do something and doesn't check to see if the motor is doing the correct thing. Now that's the difference when we come up to this next block, our just normal um, move la large motor block. It's regulated. So if we set it a power to go, the EV3 block puts a certain power out to the motor and then it reads the speed the motor is turning. If the motor is not turning fast enough, it will up the power. If the motor is turning too fast, it will actually reduce the power. And it will regulate the speed, so it will be constantly checking the speed the motor is going. If the motor is not going the correct speed, it will adjust the power to get the motor to go the correct speed. All right. So, And it's what we call closed loop, because it sends out a speed, then it reads the sensor, which brings the data back in and checks on it. So it goes out and then it comes back again, what they call closed loop. All right, the tank block basically just does that for two wheels and tries to regulate the speed for the two wheels. Now the steering block here does one more thing than that. It tries to synchronize the two um, wheels. So what happens is with the tank block, if one wheel started speeding up before the other one, it would actually get a little bit of a head start. And what would happen was, and then they eventually balance out at the same speed, but because the one motor got a head start on the other, they would be out of sync. What the steering block does is it has a syncing method. If one wheel has actually turned a little bit further than the other one, because it picked up speed sooner and got to the correct speed at a sooner time, what it'll do is it will slow it down a little bit and speed the other wheel up a little bit so they catch up and they become in sync and then it'll adjust them back to the correct speed. So looking at that, the steering block sounds the most wonderful block of all because it checks on everything and adjusts everything and makes everything wonderful for you. Well, there's a catch-22 with it. In order to do all that, it requires more computing power. So it ties up the processor on the EV3 brick more. And as you go up those from the, from the unregulated blue one at the bottom, towards the steering one of the block at the top. Each block requires more computing power. So what it means is the EV3 is busy regulating all these speeds of these motors. It's not out there reading sensors and doing other things. And that's okay if your project you're doing doesn't require the EV3 to be off doing a lot of other stuff, but it's very critical these motors are all balanced out quite well. If you have a project that the exact speed of the motor and the wheels being balanced and uh, synchronized and stuff doesn't matter so much, but reading sensors at a higher frequency or doing other calculations is more important, then it will be an advantage for you not to be doing all that syncing stuff and using the advanced block. All right, here's the heart of line sensing. We're going to try to balance half on the black and half on the white. If we read the sensor, and it's showing a high value, you're on a lot of white, you want to turn to, to go that direction towards the black. If you're on the black and it reads a low number, then you want to turn to try to come out. I'm going to try to balance ourselves half on half. Now, how far we can drift off line will depend upon two things. How fast the robot is moving and how long it is between each reading of the sensor. The longer and longer time between reading of the sensor, and the faster the robot's moving, 
the further it will, will be by the next time it's come off. Now, where that, if the line's fairly straight, that's not so much of a problem. But when we get really tight turns, that can be a problem. The, the sensor can take one reading there, oh, I'm perfectly on line. If the robot's moving quite quickly and the sensor is reading quite slowly, by the next time you read the sensor, you could be all the way out here and it reads white, which means it wants to turn that way, which is the wrong way. It's coming along here, it's coming along here, it's dead right, it's dead right, it's dead right. If it reads it when it's here, it says, oh, I'm on the black, I need to turn that way, it's quite fine. So what's going to govern is the length of time between the reads and the speed the robot's traveling. So if we want the robot to, tra to get away with traveling faster, we need to be able to read the information from the sensor at a faster rate or a shorter time. So that when we come across a line like this, we don't end up to the point where we're moving so fast and such long times between the readings, we completely miss reading the line. Okay, now we're going to look at the motion of the robot and how to use unregulated motors to get what we want. Right, they normally talk about two things. They talk about the linear speed and the angular speed. The linear speed is how quickwards, quickly it's moving forwards or backwards in a straight line, where forwards is normally referred to as positive and backwards is referred to as negative. Um, if it's moving very slowly, it's a low number. If it's moving quite quickly, it's a high number. And it's very easy to do. If we want it to move forwards or backwards in a straight line, whatever power we send to one wheel, we send exactly the same power to the other wheel. If we want it slow, we send a slow number to both wheels. If we want it fast, we send both number, uh, a large number to both wheels. If we want backwards, we send a negative number to both wheels, but we send the same number to both wheels to get linear motion. Now, angular motion, or how much you're turning, they normally refer to as turning clockwise as positive or turning uh, counterclockwise as negative. And the same thing, if we're turning quite slowly, it's a low angular speed. If we're turning quite quickly, it's a high angular speed. And to get angular speed, instead of sending the same power to both wheels, you send the opposite. So you send a positive number to one and a negative number to the other, and that makes it turn at angular speed. And the bigger those numbers are, the bigger the angular speed is. All right? And to, we send them negative to go in the other direction. Now what happens is if we want it to drive and turn at the same time, it means it's going to have linear speed and angular speed at the same time. And all we simply do is add the two together. So if I want it to go forwards at 20 and have an angular speed at 10, one wheel will be 20 plus 10 and one wheel will be 20 minus 10. So one wheel will go at 30 and one wheel will go at 10 and that will give us a linear motion of 20 and a turn rate of 10. And we can do that for all our speeds. And that basically is the way a steering block works. But then of course the steering block has the regulation on top of it, but that's what it does. We give it the power, uh, the speed, but the, the linear speed we want, and the angular speed we want, and the EV3 just adds the two together. Okay, I'm gonna look at my two programs here. They're both proportional line followers and both do exactly the same thing except for one's using steering block and one's using unregulated motor block. Now the steering block program is a shorter program because it does a lot of stuff for you automatically. It adds the linear and the um, angular speeds together already for you. And then on top of that, it does regulation. The bottom program down here, my unregulated block, I need to add the angular speed and the linear speed together and send it out to each of the two motors to get it to do what I want it to do. But then it will just send it out like that and it won't do any further regulation. So although it's a longer program, it's actually doing less because it doesn't have all that stuff happening in the background that the uh, steering block does. Okay, here's my test track. I'm going to time how long it takes to get from the grey dot to the grey dot. It's a fairly difficult test track. We have some shallow turns, some tight turns, and we even have some right angle turns. I've trained the robot set up to be on the outside of the curve, so he'll follow around the outside of the black line. The first test I will do is just with the normal regulated steering block that most people are used to using. Now, obviously, when I first started tuning this to go as fast as I, it could, I could actually have it go around the first part of the track quite fast. Um, the first trouble I started having was with that corner there, 
that's a little bit tighter than the rest. It first started falling off that, then I had to slow the robot down and get it to turn a little bit tighter. He started going around that corner. Once he started going around that corner consistently, then he was falling off on the right angle corners down the bottom, which are quite hard to get round. So in order to get him around the right angle corners down the bottom, I had to slow the robot right down and actually make the robot wiggle fairly tight in order to get round. So we'll see what the difference is with this robot and with the other robot. coming up to the moment of the truth shortly the difficult part of the track this is what makes or breaks your robot like I said it wasn't until I slowed the robot right down that he wouldn't just completely miss that corner Just coming up to the finish line now, and of course we'll be able to record how long he takes. Now this time, same track, but we're going to use our unregulated program on this one here. And what I found when I was tuning this one here, I could turn motor speeds up a fair bit. I didn't spend nowhere near as much time in tuning this one. because it was so much faster than the last one. All right, so the normal steering one I was using before, I did lots and lots of tuning of it to try to get it go as fast as possible. This one here, very easy, I was going quicker, so I left it alone for this demo purposes. Now we're coming up to the moment of truth. The right angle corners. Made the first one. He's made the second one. Voila. There we are. 